Citrus TV studios for a special webisode edition of Talking Points. I'm Jack Watson. The shooting of an unarmed black man by police in Sacramento two weeks ago is sparking national debate about police brutality. Yesterday, a private autopsy revealed that Stephen Clark was shot eight times in the back while being pursued by law enforcement. Police say they shot at Clark because they believed he was holding a gun, but a cell phone was found near his body. Reaction to this most recent shooting is igniting several protests across the nation. And joining me now to discuss the political implications of the shootings are Talking Points contributors Michael Fernari and Anthony DeBundo. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. Now, the first thing I'd like you to do is sort of lay out what happened, what both sides are saying about it. So, so five, five or six days ago, Stefan Clark was shot by the police in Sacramento. And so the response to this, the police were responding to complaints that windows were being broken in cars near the home of Stefan Clark's grandmother, and that's why he was at that area. We don't know for sure whether Stefan Clark was the one breaking those car windows just yet. So after the complaint is made, police show up on the scene and Stefan Clark was shot eight times. Now, what, it, what actually happened between the, the reports and the shooting is unclear as of right now. Right, and what we do know is that Clark was shot eight times, he was shot at 20 times, and eight of those shots, six of them were in the back, one was to the side, and then one was to the front. So that seems to suggest that Clark was running away and evading the police when he was shot, and then he turned towards the police as they finaled the, fired the fatal shots. Uh, what they did find also is that eight of them, all eight, were fatal. So that leads to believe that the police were shooting to kill, which has been a big complaint of the Black Lives Matter movement, that they're shooting first instead of asking questions, and that they're shooting to kill when they don't need to. Now you talk about the Black Lives Matter movement. These protest groups are absolutely outraged by this and the decision not to charge the officers involved in the Alton Sterling shooting. Now. Elaborate a little more on what these protest groups are saying. So there have been protests in Sacramento for about five straight days. Now, as of right now, the protests have not really spread nationally. You know, a lot of the national energy has been kind of directing the attention of the March for Our Lives and more of the gun control issues. So the protests have not spread. And also, fortunately, the protests in Sacramento currently are nonviolent and have been very peaceful. Nothing like we were seeing in Ferguson and Baltimore in years past. So um, at this moment, the protests are not national, but it is a national story. And as more information is available, I'm sure that will pick up a little more steam. Right. We just heard about the autopsy yesterday. So I'm expecting more news to kind of pick up on this and, and really latch on to this as a big news story. But what we've seen is that the March for Our Lives has taken so much of the oxygen of cable news and of national news. Everybody's talking about the, the march, the response to the march. They had all the Parkland uh, victims come on air and, and speak. We've talked so much about that that we've kind of lost steam in the whole Black Lives Matter movement. And as a whole, the Black Lives Matter movement has been quiet for like the last year or so because everybody's so focused on other issues, and especially with the Trump administration, that now we're kind of back and we've turned the, the burner up again on Black Lives Matter issues. Now, you talk about the the steam moving away from the Black Lives Matter movement due to several other important issues taking the national spotlight. Let's look at this through a more national lens. What has the White House said about this issue? So very recently, Sarah Huckabee Sanders was asked about this incident in a press conference. Now, her response was fairly noncommittal. She kind of lamented the shooting and said that it's always an unfortunate situation You know, when somebody loses their life. However, on the more policy issues and on actually giving an opinion, she did not really give much information. She said that it's a local issue and something that the Sacramento police will worry about but the administration does not have an official response. Now, if you're going to date back to the RNC and back to President Trump's campaign, you'll remember that he was billed as kind of the law and order president, and that's how he was kind of um, you know, delivering his message to voters through that lens. So it's unlikely that he would be too sympathetic with the messages of BLM, but as of right now, there really has not been a firm statement on police brutality from the Trump White House. Right, they haven't released a statement, and it's very different from the approach of the Obama administration. The Obama administration walked a very fine line between not teetering too far into the, the territory where they were supporting Black Lives Matter while also acknowledging the issues that Black Lives Matter was posing in front of the entire country. So the Trump administration has run on this whole law and order campaign. Well, now what we've seen is that the police don't look too great in this current situation. More facts have to come out. We will see the body camera videos. But right now, the police don't look like they're in the right. So now it's against Trump's method and his, his kind of mantra that law and order is most important because we have law and order kind of breaking down. And now you talk about the president running on the campaign trail as the law and order sort of president. Now let's talk about laws a little bit. People are sort of searching for a legislative solution to all this. Body cameras for all police officers has been uh, one of the big policy proposals that has been mentioned in all this discussion. Is there really a legislative solution to all this? What can we do to solve this? We've seen different police departments across the country try different things. Uh, in Baltimore, we saw that they had a, a, a Department of Justice report that said that 
they were illegally practicing discrimination, so they've tried to enforce courses to help the police officers with that. In Dallas, they trained all of their police officers in de-escalation training, teaching them to shoot after they ask questions and only shoot as a last resort, resorting more to tasering and pepper spray and, and trying to talk down the, uh, the suspects instead of having to resort to violence. And what they saw in Dallas is that the shooting, the shooting deaths went down significantly. The violent encounters went down significantly. Both of those were effective, along with the body cameras, because body cameras are so important to keeping the police accountable, because Black Lives Matter is saying, when it's the policeman's word against the black man's word, it's not fair. But if we have a camera, the cameras don't lie. So that's what they really want to see passed everywhere. You heard Anthony mention body cameras, and another important detail from this incident is that after the shots were fired, the police actually switched their body cameras off, and you know, presumably to talk about what had just happened and kind of you know, try to find, try to get medical attention or something of that nature. And that raises a lot of concerns about police accountability from the protesters, and people are wondering why were the cameras switched off after the shooting? And we'll certainly keep an eye on the fallout of the Stephen Clark shooting. And that's all the time we have on this webisode edition of Talking Points. For more Talking Points content like full shows, articles, and webisodes, visit CitrusTV.com and follow us on Twitter at Citrus TV News. Be sure to tune in next Thursday for a brand new episode of Talking Points. For Anthony DeBundo, Michael Fernari, and everybody here at Citrus TV, I'm Jack Watson.